Hello everyone, I just built this gaming PC using parts from AliExpress for under $300 and in this video I'll show you how I put it all together and test its performance in both online and single player games, so hit the like button and let's start. I went for the ultimate budget build and got the cheapest motherboard set available. It came with everything I needed, motherboard with CPU pre-installed, 16 gigs of RAM, SATA cable and backplate. It's a no-name Chinese motherboard, but to my surprise it's put together very decently. The soldering job is good, it has PCIe slot, SATA 3.0, USB 3.0, on the back it has 4 USB 2.0, HDMI and DGA ports for your integrated graphics, by the way the CPU supported, so in theory you don't even need GPU to get this running. It also has Ethernet, 2 USB 3.0 and audio ports. On the board we have Intel i5-3570, which is an almost 11 years old. Intel CPU. It has 4 cores with 3.4 GHz base frequency and boost up to 3.8 GHz. I'm curious to see how it handles gaming in 2023. So far I spent $65 and for the price it feels like a good value. CPU cooler delivery running late, that is something you should be prepared for when ordering from AliExpress. So at the moment I went with a $10 CPU cooler from Amazon. It is a simple aluminum radiator with 3 pin RGB cooler, but at least it should keep our 67 watt CPU below the critical temperature. The other thing I need is a CMOS battery, there are some delivery restrictions about it in China so I got it from Amazon for a couple of bucks. I also got this SSD from Amazon since there is no price difference compared to AliExpress. It's a 500GB SATA free SSD for $19. Never heard of that brand but it has good reviews on Amazon so we'll see. The same SSDs you can find on AliExpress as well, I used to order this one and it worked pretty well. Now for the same reason I got power supply from Amazon, there is not much to choose from in a budget segment, so I went with a 500W Thermaltake Smart. Not much to say here, it is a $40 PSU in which I have at least some confidence and it has everything I need for this build. For the graphics card I went with a probably ultimate bang for the buck GPU, it's a RX 580 with 8GB of VRAM. It is one of that 2048 SP processor version, I got it for $75 from AliExpress. It has a good port combination, cooling with two fans and requires 6 pin connector. Overall it's in a good condition, I don't see any issues. Now finally the case, if you are on a tight budget you can go with a cheap case, but I decided to go with this Enermax Marble Shell MS20. It was $60 at the moment and for the price it has 3 pre-installed RGB fans with the hub, tempted glass side panel and outstanding front panel design which I think looks pretty cool. So all parts ready, let's build this piece. I had to move rear fan on top to fit the CPU cooler, which is worse for airflow, but I had no choice at the moment. And also move the front fans a little bit higher, I think it looks way better that way. The motherboard does not have RGB support, but I can control mods with the reset button on the front panel. Overall everything is pretty easy to put together and it is booted from the first attempt. Now it's time to set up windows, you gotta also need a Wi-Fi adapter, I got one from AliExpress and it worked out pretty well. Let's keep boring benchmarks and get straight to the games. All games are running on 1080p 144Hz monitor. In CSGO with the competitive settings getting over 150fps most of the time. The frame rate is great and the game feels very smooth. The same in Valorant, on low settings getting 150 plus fps, sometimes I get micro freezes but overall the game feels good. Moving to more demanding titles, Apex Legends is on low settings and anti-aliasing on runs in 60 to 100 FPS range depending on what's happening in the game. CPU runs hot at about 85 degrees but still boosts itself to 3.6 GHz. In Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 with low settings Full HD getting around 55 FPS most of the time, the frame time is not perfect but it's playable. You can play with the upscaling settings to get better FPS as well. I couldn't get a stable FPS in PUBG even on very low settings getting lots of freezes and it's not comfortable to play. Moving to single player games, in Spider-Man Miles Morales with medium graphics preset Full HD, FPS raises to 60-70 while swinging and it drops to around 35-50 in loaded scenes. This is a very CPU intensive game but our i5 still handles console FPS. The frame time is not perfect but it's playable. In Elden Ring with medium preset and motion blur off getting around 45 FPS with a pretty 
straight frame time. The game feels good and in tunnels I get raises to even 60 FPS. In Days Gone on medium settings and max field of view getting around 50 to 70 FPS range, very playable overall. In the middle of benchmarking I got CPU cooler delivered, it's a 2 heat pipe tau cooler, got it from AliExpress for $13. I quickly installed it and also moved case fan back to the rear side. Now I expect CPU temperature to be a lot better, so let's retest some games. In Apex Legends CPU temperature stays under 65 degrees versus 80 plus degrees before. So this cooler is definitely worth the price, even though it looks not as far as RGB one. I also decided to test a new game, the Resident Evil 4 remake demo, and to my surprise with a low settings and anti-aliasing on, getting pretty stable around 50 FPS. If you set Fidelity FX in performance mode, you can even get stable 70 plus FPS, with a raises 200 at some places. And the game still looks good. So this build is more like an experiment for the content, definitely not a build guide unless you do not have an adequate prices in local stores. This motherboard set is good for light gaming but not more. Also since the CPU has integrated graphics and considering how small the motherboard is, you can build a pretty compact office PC with this set. One part of this that I really like is the graphics card. It is a great value and I might even recommend it to you if you are looking for an under $100 GPU for 1080p gaming. I decided I decided to pair it with Intel i5-11400 to test its full potential, but before I took it apart and even though the thermal paste seemed to be in good condition, I replaced it anyway. And now let's go through the games. In Valorant with the same low settings, I'm now getting 250 plus FPS most of the time. Around the same result in CSGO, great frame time in both games with around 250 fps all time. In Apex Legends with low settings and anti-aliasing on, fps is around the same range but it's a lot more stable with a good frame time. Notice the graphics card temperature now stays under 61 degree but that's not because of the new thermal paste but because it's in a more spacious case. In the old case temperature was improved by 5 degrees staying under 72. As you can see the Chinese motherboard has very strange PCIe port placement so there is not much space between a graphics card and the case. If I want to get a better temperature I should probably go with a more spacious case. In Warzone 2.0 getting 60 to 80 fps with this card. Frame time graph looks pretty good. Elden Ring with the same medium preset getting around 60 fps most of the time with a straight frame time graph. In Days Gone seeing stable at around 65 fps. The same with the Spider-Man Miles Morales and the fps is a lot more stable than before. I'm testing this to show you the value of RX 580. If you are looking for a card under $100, I couldn't think of anything else now. It can handle any online game and in single player games you can expect around 60 FPS on medium settings in Full HD. I think it's a very impressive result for the $75 I paid. These cards are also available on Amazon, which is great, but you overpay around $40 for the same no-name brands. You can check this video if interested. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to every component, as well as to the build I actually recommend if you are looking for a cheap gaming PC. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I see you soon in my other videos.